The first ATI aircraft to enter the market was named ATI 42-300. It was designed to carry 50 passengers. So wouldn't it be more logical to call it ATI 50-100? Hello aviators, my name is Magnar Nordahl, I am an ATI captain and instructor. Delivered to the first customer in 1985, the ATI-42-300 was the first product of the newly founded aircraft manufacturer ATR. It was a regional aircraft powered by two turboprop engines and could seat up to 50 passengers. Many aircraft types got the names from the number of passengers they were designed to carry. And ATR's design was no exemption. But why was it called ATR-42 when it could carry 50 passengers? And why did they skip the 100 and 200 variants? The short answer is that the ATR-42 originally was designed to carry 42 passengers. And that the first aircraft to be delivered to the customers was the third variant. It's a fascinating story. In 1979, it was reported that the French aviation manufacturer Aerospatial was working on a transport aircraft design named AS-35. It would be a regional turboprop with a capacity of 30 to 40 passengers. It would have a T-tail and be easy to convert to a military transport with a rear loading ramp. The main landing gear will be attached to the fuselage. At the same time, the Italian aircraft manufacturer Air Italia was working on a similar concept called the AIT-230. Two versions were planned. The first was a commuter aircraft that could accommodate 30 passengers in a pressurized cabin. Later on, the design was stretched to accommodate 38 to 42 passengers. The second version was intended to be a cargo aircraft. It would be unpressurized and have two rear loading doors. In 1981, Aerospatial and Aeritalia formed a joint venture with the purpose to merge the two projects into a new generation of regional aircraft. The new company was named ATR, Avions de Transport Regional in French, Aerida Transporto Regionale in Italian. The headquarter was decided to be located in Toulouse in France. Air Italia will build the fuselage and tail section in Naples, and Aerospatial will build the wings in Bordeaux. Final assembly will take place in Toulouse. In the same facility where the Sud Aviation Caravelle and the Concorde had been produced. The two designs were merged into an aircraft with a capacity of 42 passengers. And to reflect the seating, it was named ATI-42-100. The ATI-42-100 would be powered by two Pratt Mitney Canada 120 engines, each developing 2,000 horsepower. The max takeoff weight would be 14,715 kilos. When discussing the project with potential customers, it became evident that there was a need for more capacity. Consequently, ATR reshuffled the interior and launched the ATR 42200 with up to 46 seats. The max takeoff weight was increased to 15,550 kilos. Two ATR 42200s were built and both were used for flight testing. The first one, registered Foxtrot Whiskey Echo Golf Alpha, made its first flight on the 16th of August 1984. The third ATR was the first ATR-42-300, with an increased capacity of 50 passengers, and a max takeoff weight increased to 16,700 kilos. So why did I end up with exactly 50 passengers? When you have up to 50 passenger seats, you need only one cabin attendant. If you have 51 passenger seats, you will need two cabin attendants. And that means more expenses. This is serial number 003. 
the first ATR42-300. It served in nine different airline companies before it was retired less than 10 years ago. It is restored to resemble serial number 001, the first prototype ATR42-200. It is now displayed at Aeroscopia Museum at Toulouse, where you can also see the Caravelle and Concorde. In fact, the museum has two of them. Up to this date, about 500 ATR-42s have been delivered. In addition, has ATR delivered 1200 units of its longest sibling, the ATR-72, which means it's the biggest commercial success in this class. But that's another story. Thank you for watching, have a wonderful day and happy learning!